Bring up the bodies and locks the darkly glittering court of Henry VIII, where Thomas Cromwell is now chief minister. With Henry captivated by plain Jane Seymour and rumours of Anne Boleyn's faithlessness whispered by all, Cromwell knows what he must do to secure his position. But the bloody theatre of the Queen's final days will leave no one unscathed. So guys, uh, back at the book blurb about Hilary Mantel's latest novel, Bring Up the Bodies. If you didn't already know, this is the sequel to Wolf Hall, which she wrote a couple of years ago, uh, both of which won the Man Booker Prize, if I remember correctly. At least Wolf Hall did. They both did. Anyway, they're incredible books. They are loosely, well, no, pretty tightly based on a true story, that of Thomas Cromwell, chief minister, ascended from a poor Putney uh, ragamuffin in the kind of 1600s, something like that anyway, when uh, Henry VIII was coming into power. And you might have heard of Henry VIII's six wives. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty tough time to be a wife, to be a queen. Henry VIII probably wasn't the easiest man to get along with. Thomas Cromwell wasn't either by the sounds of things, but he was ruthlessly efficient. And what must surely be a trilogy at the very least, uh, the two books so far, is an incredible tale Thomas Cromwell's kind of ascendancy, his rise to power from humble beginnings. Uh, it's an underdog story, and us Brits love underdog stories, right? I mean, why else would we watch the football? Although, at least in underdog stories, sometimes the underdogs win. But maybe that's not a very good analogy. Anyway, the point being that it is an absolute must-read. It's educational, because you learn about history and stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, Horrible Histories is great, but it's amazing to see characters like Henry VIII, Jane Seymour, uh, Anna Boleyn, Thomas Cromwell, of course, like really fleshed out, very, very tightly based on, on the truth, although not much was known about Thomas Cromwell. So, yeah, you really get to see uh, Hilary Mantel's kind of imaginings of just what life was really like, and she fills in some of the gaps, but it feels very authoritative. I'm just going to read you a tiny little excerpt, as I like to do. Uh, so this is kind of like mid-book, oh, shit's about to hit the fan, basically. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, because maybe you know the story of, of uh, yeah, how plain Jane Seymour, as the back of the book so kindly refers to her, came to be. But anyway, in case you don't, I won't give it away. So anyway, this happens in a moment of, uh, of kind of, yeah, everything being stirred up. The Duke's upper body is still armed. Perhaps he has been out there in the yard, jousting by himself. His large face is flushed, his beard, more impressive year on year, spreads over his breastplate. The valiant Moore steps forward to say, His Majesty is in conference with, but Brandon knocks him aside as if he were on a crusade. He, Cromwell, follows on the Duke's heels. If he had a net, he would drop it over him. Brandon banks one on the King's door with his fist, then throws it open before him. Leave what you're doing, Majesty. You want to hear this by God. You're quit of the old lady. She is on her deathbed. You will soon be a widower. Then you can get rid of the other one and marry it to France by God and lay your hands on Normandy as dowry. He notices Chapois. Oh, Ambassador, well, you can take yourself off. No use you staying for scraps. Go home and make your own Christmas. We don't want you here. Henry has turned white. Think what you are saying, he approaches Brandon as if he might knock him down, which, if he had a poleaxe, he could. My wife is carrying a child. I am lawfully married. And that reminds me, actually, it's an amazing style this book's written in. Uh, kind of the second person refers to Cromwell as he, um, and also in the present tense. So it has a super urgent feel, and, you know, for a historical novel, I think that's quite a novelty. Anyway, I've seen that I'm approaching five minutes, and that's uh, far too long to listen to one person talking, especially about a book. But, you know, hey, amazing cover, incredible book, wonderful series, just absolutely gripping the writing is just so natural without being contrived, but at the same time, it just has little passages that are incredibly evocative, sentimental. Uh, Thomas Cromwell goes into these little reveries every now and again, but he's not just being a man about town, busting people's asses and helping out the king, who's his only friend. So it's kind of like half buddy story, half romance. I was going to add some more genres there, but I realized I made a hole out of two halves too quickly. Anyhow, go read it. Uh, see below to yeah, add it on Goodreads or buy it off Amazon. Just trying to make life easy for you. Uh, yeah, and let me know if you read it, if you've read it, what you think about it. And yeah, join the Mad Cause Book Club. Thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you for the next one.